Hello everyone, this is Mr. Informal back with a new podcast. We are on the 70th edition of the Mr. Informal podcast. I hope you are doing well today. And it's July. July is basically here. And so don't forget to add me on Instagram. That's M-I-S-T-E-R-I-N-F-O-R-M-A-L. And check out my website at mrinformal.com. That's M-R-I-N-F-O-R-M-A-L.com. So the four topics for today is Burberry is going to be carbon neutral. Number two, Johnny Ive will be leaving Apple. Number three, kimono. The word kimono. And last but not least, reusable package has a bright future in the world. And so those are for the to- four topics for today for the Mr. Formal Podcast. I hope you will learn something today and hopefully hopefully leave some comments if you have any questions. And so let's go ahead and start it out. And so an article from the uh, Business of Fashion states that uh, Burberry wants to become carbon neutral by 2022 not only that um but on by 2016 they reduced in scope one escape scope two greenhouse gas emission by 95 percent by 2022 from 2016 so starting from 2016 uh, to 2002 they would like to be 95 percent carbon neutral And so it just basically means that Burberry wants to reduce their gas emission to the earth or wants to reduce the amount of energy that they are producing when they are producing luxury goods. So they want to focus on sustainability. Not only that, that they want to be plastic free by 2025 and stop destroying unsold items which they should have never done so let me get on to this okay so like i said in any of my podcasts i think it is absolutely great when you have a luxury good brand that wants to reduce their carbon emission wants to be sustainable stop being plastic i mean being plastic free and actually stop destroying their unsold goods and so by Burberry is doing this. Hopefully, other I know Prada is doing it, and I'm pretty sure a lot of brands are doing it. But by a luxury brand doing this, and hopefully, it's not just marketing gimmick or some kind of marketing ploy, they are actually doing this. And so, I know that Burberry to me right now is on a uh trying to rebuild trying to restructure trying to revise their organization it's pretty obvious that they already made their new logo to that b i think it's a horrible b it's absolutely terrible i still don't understand why they even chose that and even now i'm still not seeing what kind of design that people that the upper management saw when it comes to designing these things but in any case back to the topic at hand you know by the time 2022 comes i mean it's almost gonna come that's in four years oh i'm sorry three years it will be here i mean they will probably reduce their their emission probably by 95 percent or it could be 99 percent and i'm also glad that in six years they are going to be plastic free so i mean kudos to them i mean what else can i say the only thing left i can say is that hopefully it's not just sustainability that on that they're focusing on what about ethics what about working environment working conditions and what about fair wages let's focus on that not only that Let's focus on working environment in terms of the office. And hopefully they can also design better items, better design goods, and have actually great service at their retail store. It's kind of hard to find good service nowadays, especially at a Burberry store. 
So, the second topic for today is Johnny Ive is leaving Apple. Yes, it's all over the news. Johnny Ive will depart from Apple. Johnny Ive has been the creative design chief of Apple. I mean, going to re redesigning or basically re. I shouldn't say I'm not saying gonna re, re, reinvent, but do or uh, basically changing the whole uh, what iOS looks like. So and he's going to be designing. I mean, he's going to build his new business called Love From, and it's gonna launch next year. And his first customer is Apple. Not only that, he says, while I will not be in an Apple employee, I will still be very involved, I hope, for many years to come. I, I don't even know what that means. That basically means I'll still be an Apple employee and yet not be there. Come on, which one is it? Pick one. You want to be at Apple or you want to be at your own company. Not only that, you have Apple as your first customer. So which is it? So, look. I mean, however you want to call this guy, it's pretty obvious that he has a minimalistic lifestyle. He has, his design is very intuitive, very customer based, something that is very fluid, something that customer can easily react to, can easily function. That's his design. It's almost as if form equals function but i think it's more function a little bit more function over form because again minimalistic style is i mean it's not it's not as great looking in my eyes okay and he's been the chief design officer for for since 2015 i mean but he's been there since steve jobs was there too so it's not like he doesn't know apple so what does this hold with Johnny I? Well, I wouldn't be surprised if other companies comes up to him and say, hey, we want you to design this. You know, we want you to, we're gonna hire you. So it's good that he's gonna be his own man. He's not gonna be in Apple's uh, paycheck, or maybe he is for a little bit, but he's not gonna be in Apple time, uh, Apple times in terms of what time he has to be in the office. He's basically his own man now because he's, building his own company design company and again i wouldn't be surprised if more of it's a contemporary minimalistic type of design companies or design studio and i'm not mad at him for leaving yes he probably had a lot of great benefits at apple but at the same time when you are good at what you're doing and again i'm only talking software here okay i'm not talking about hardware hardware is a totally different thing we can talk about but in terms of software for for apple okay for the apple devices he's done great because if he didn't great if he didn't do great it's pretty obvious that you know apple's ios wouldn't be where it is right now now there have been hiccups that his fault certainly his fault because he's the design chief that apple went through and hopefully that he improves he improves himself when he moves on from apple in terms of design in terms of his beliefs his philosophy and again i would not be surprised if a lot of companies starts calling to his company so as for the third topic for today so Apparently, Kim Kardashian wants to trademark kimono. Trademark kimono, the logo. But apparently, there's been a lot of complaints, backlash in social media users, especially in the Japanese community. Not only that, I, I'm, 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 I'm confused as to why this is even a big deal, okay? But apparently, a certain uh, people in in these streets, they're saying kimono is a Japanese tradition of clothes and we are proud of its history. 
it's used for different um, clothing wear is basically a formal wear to for the Japanese woman to wear so Kim Kardashian is not trademarking the word she's trademarking the logo from what I'm reading now if she wants to name it that way fine okay but I just don't understand why this is getting backlash from I mean Japan I mean can can anybody tell me why this should be getting a backlash I mean if she wants to name she can name her line whatever she wants so this this is just one of those things where I just don't get it why are people so passionate about complaining this and yet they don't complain about their own government they don't complain about what the fu- you know what was happening in their world and I've read through these tweets saying I feel very sad that the name is being used for something different from what we Japanese know about and in other words, these are my grandmother's kimono. Some of these are dyed embroidered. So I, I get it. I get it. I mean, can anybody tell me why she can't use the word kimono for her line? So why is it that Jap- Japan or other countries can use English word, even though that's not what it means? She's not trademarking the word kimono because you can't do that can't trademark a word not only that this is what uh, frustrates me okay so the mayor of Kyoto yes the mayor of Kyoto has issued an open letter to Kim Kardashian as a formal request stating that kimono is traditional ethnic dress for uh, dress fostering our rich nature and history with our predecessors uh, tireless endeavors and studies and it is a culture that has been cherished and passed down we care in our living also it is a fruit of craftsmanship and truly symbolizes the sense of beauty spirits value japanese in recent years we know we not only see japanese but many foreign tourists wearing kimono strolling around in kyoto in cities it is proved that kimono will be okay so you're telling me that when people see the word kimono on Kim Kardashian line and when they word it so you think that everybody in the world is gonna think oh that's a real kimono stop it no it's not I mean we if you love to travel and you know what a real kimono looks like you should know but to complain about this this is absolutely ridiculous if you're a man you have more important things to do other than just talk about this now I'm not trying to absolve Kim on this look if you're gonna make a clothing line I, like I said design it correctly be ethical be sustainable be fair in terms of wages that's what I'm saying but for you but trademarking the logo kimono that's fine but trademarking the word kimono that's totally different now that's a problem but in the end I think people are just trying to find ways to complain about this and like I said if people are so passionate about complaining about this why aren't you passionate about complaining about your country's government you're telling me that everything is good in your government get out of here so last and not least the fourth topic for today saw so, uh, article in supply chain drive why reusable food packaging has a promising future that's the title of the article consumers are looking for both convenience and sustainability and companies are responding to with containers bottles and bags designed for many uses so basically they're saying that hey reusable food packaging is on the rise not only that they also give uh, certain examples of this and I, and, I, and I absolutely think this is great so uh, an example of this is in the article that says well, uh, a company na- called Loop Loop is an online delivery service where, where customers select their products and pay for the order 
and wait for it to be delivered in a reusable tote. Shipping is free after 7 items are ordered. When the product is used up, customers replace the jars in the tote and wait for UPS to pick up their used containers and deliver their replacement order. So the first container that they use, they can put in the UPS, UPS will use that. So that used container will be cleaned out and they can use it again. That's great. Not only that, in loop, they said that they made sustainably reusable. So another company called Time, and the article says Time uh, gives one dollar off new purchases when customers return their jars, which resulted in an 80% return rate. It quickly became evident the jars were appealing for reuse in other ways from stro from storing change to packing homemade lunches I mean what can I say see this is exactly what I'm saying now reusability is certainly not free when you reuse yeah you, you always have to clean up you have to repackage so there are a little bit of cost to it but 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 here's the thing in the article it says monetarily the more frequently the containers are used the lower the cost per use and in the article although Rossi said that the point of, at which a loop container becomes cheaper is different from every, every manufacturer loop containers are viable for approximately 100 uses so a three dollar container would cost three cents per use a plastic container can cost anywhere from 13 to 30 cents a piece wow that saves a lot of money saves a lot of money when you reuse it like you can even say when you repackage it now this is the future it's pretty evident i mean people are already using tote bag people are already going to whole foods or a warehouse a grocery they use jars or some kind of plastic container they price reuse some you know plastic bags I mean yeah you can use, reuse plastic bags I mean especially when you go to a takeout box they you uh, some people even carry a takeout box but that's great I mean the less the less trash we have in the world the better because we are realizing that we have to take care of earth and if we take care of earth the earth will do the rest I've learned this I've seen this with my own eyes especially if you go to the forest heck you can even see uh, radioactive areas that were decimated and now I mean obviously they're still radioactive but there's trees still in it they're still growing in it I mean even if you put a chemical onto a lake you gotta give it some you gotta give it years, but sooner or later Mother Nature will take its course and will clean it up. I mean obviously there's still some leftovers, but Mother Nature will clean it up. It's the Mother Nature way of cleaning the earth. And we gotta do our part. Because I mean you can say, oh we own this world. Well, I don't know I don't really know who owns this world. But by taking care of Earth, we can absolutely Take care and have a brighter future for future generations. And so that basically it for the Mr. Informal 78th edition podcast. I hope you learned something today. And if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to add me on social media, Instagram, M-I-S-T-E-R-I-N-F-O-R-M-A-L dot com. And on my website, M-R-I-N-F-O-R-M-A-L ormal.com so i will see you in the next podcast bye bye